All right, welcome back to Meticulous Mechanic. I'm working on my 2016 Yamaha FC09. As you can see from this list, there's a lot of periodic checks and adjustments, but right now I'm fo focusing on section 3.5, adjusting the valve clearance. So I've already removed the so I've already removed the seat, and the last video was removing the fuel tank. I'm going to skip over the air induction system for now and go straight on to the radiator on page 6-1. So page 6-1, removing the radiator. I've already removed the air scoop right as part of the tank removal video. Now it says drain the coolant, refer to changing the coolant, page 3-26. So step one. Changing the coolant, remove the radiator cap bolt 1, radiator cap 2, and the radiator cap stopper 3. So there's 1, 2, 3. So let's do that. All right, let's move on over here to the radiator cap. So that's an 8 millimeter. Remove this bolt. Switch the direction. There's a piece on the back that falls out, so I'm holding it with my right hand. So there's the bolt. And on the back is this guy. Only goes in one way like this. So this is just an aftermarket cap that I bought because when I bought the bike used, it had been crashed. I bought it used with 10,000 miles and it was all rusty and I just didn't want to buy a new radiator cap. Obviously this adds weight, but I don't care. It kind of looks cool. It's made out of aluminum. So never remove this radiator cap when the bike is hot because this radiator is full of pressure and it could blow in your face. So I put on gloves because there's actually a sharp thing back here you got to be careful of. Um, I just push in with my thumbs straight in and turn. And that gets you past the first hump. Then you got to keep pushing and turn some more. And then it comes right off. And you can see there's one, two tabs, one tab there, and one tab there. So when you go to put it back on, there's a notch here and a notch here. So line up the two tabs and push down and turn. There's little ramps that it rides up on. Okay, one more time quickly, like if I were just doing it, push down and turn. There we go. So next is the coolant reservoir cover, number two, coolant reservoir three, and collars, number four. So all of this is right below the reservoir radiator cap that we just took off. Okay, radiator cap removed. Now we're gonna move the tripod down here. Looks like we're gonna remove this bolt. And this one over here. So it looks like, according to the schematic, the collar on this bolt is in front of the reservoir, and on the other bolt it's behind. There's that bolt. That was a three millimeter. Let's see, this one's a five. Okay. 
Now is when it all falls apart and you hope you can get it back together. Like this one has a washer on the front. There's that one backspacer. This one looks like it's held on pretty well. It doesn't want to fall off. The other one, I'm just going to let this hang. You can see the other one back here. I'm going to take that one out. Let's see if I can do it so you can see. I'm just going to push it through and catch it from behind. There it is. So it's like a plastic bushing and it will go back in like this when we go to put this back together. That's what will come out. Let's set that aside. And the other mounting point, let's just lower this tripod a little. You can see the other mounting point for this is right Where'd it go? There it is. Right here. If we zoom up, that's right above the CP3 cover, right below. So the little plastic bushing that went on the Ford one that went in here. Oops. Bang the tray pod the tripod. So if you rotate this little assembly up, that would be going right in there. So this other one doesn't look as difficult because you don't have to worry about that space where you just swing it up over here. And you can see that's where the bolt goes in, right like this. And then just tighten that up. Let's see. So the bolt comes out like that. So I'm just going to put this bolt back in before I lose it. One trick I like to do is just take a, a socket. It's a 3 8 socket with a 5 millimeter hex key. And then you can put the bolt on there like that. It makes it easier to turn sometimes. So you can just put the bolt in and spin this. Kind of helps because it pushes the bolt in while you turn. And then you can do it really fast. So there's that one. Let's just spin it all the way down. The other one. Let's just spin this up. Where'd it go? There. Let's find the spacer. See if we can focus it better. There we go. And we know the spacer is going to go in here. I was watching another video and made this seem kind of difficult. So let me pause it. I'm going to get some needle nose. Try again. See if we can get it to focus. There we go. I'm just holding this like this, like it's going to go in there. And let me see if I can get the bolt in. There we go. It actually just threads into this thing back here. That's bolted to the plastic or see if you can see it turning. There you go. So now we won't lose any of that. So next is to remove the coolant reservoir cap. I kept reading this and I go, well, I wonder how you get that cap off, but it actually just comes off. So let's go look at it. So the coolant reservoir and the coolant reservoir cover is kind of hanging now. 
and if we zoom up on the coolant reservoir cap right here. We're looking at it closer, it's just kind of hanging here. You can see it actually starts up here. So here's where we remove the radiator cap. And here's the overflow hose. It goes down along the radiator, which is here. And then it goes behind this radiator hose. And there's a, you might have to replace this with a zip tie, but it's actually got a place, kind of a cool zip tie with a little hump on it. For the hose to go through. So then it goes behind this hose. If you, if you look under here. So you can see it coming down behind the hose. And then it actually goes into the reservoir cap. This guy. And it looks like it tees. One goes in the bottle, that plastic bottle, and the other one comes down. There we go. It comes off the cap and then down. It goes through this little hole and then it goes on to the front of the, that's that bolt we just took out, the one that was towards the rear of the bike, the five millimeter. Yeah, it goes up under there and then it clips into that right there. So zoom out and you spin it back where it goes. Then it'll remount up like that, like I showed you before. Oh, so the cap actually just came out. I was laughing. It says remove the cap. So it was like that. It actually just pries off. It doesn't even have threads. There's a little tab you can pull here. And then it comes off. And to put it back on, you'll carefully tuck this back under like that. There's one hose going inside, and then that other one I already showed you going around the back. So this one bolt I put back for safekeeping with the plastic spacer. I'm going to have to take that out to get the cover off. So but should be able to get this back together now. There it is. Let's see if it just rolls out and I can catch it. There it is. On there. So we'll have to just remember where those go. And then down here, that's where that other bolt went. The two bolts that hold the whole assembly on, but it actually I thought this spacer was more in there well, but so this part's just plastic. That's the black cover. And then there's uh we just pull it out. Let's see. There's a metal spacer. And let's see, does the cover come off now? Oh yeah, see now we can get the cover off because like that. The hose, yeah, it looks like the hose is a little smashed, but that just comes out there. And then we're gonna have to unhook this down here. Okay. Let me pause it. I can't do this with one hand. Okay, I tried to pull up on this, but you actually just slide the hose out like this. Oh, and actually I got the whole cover off now. There's your low and your full mark. We'll be using those when we add the new coolant. There's that. So I'm just going to put these bolts back with this cover. 
you have the one spacer like this and this spacer went there and the plastic reservoir went in there that was this bolt with the washer and that other plastic piece which I've, sh which I've shown you will go here and the bolt goes here so for now we're just going to set it down like this and then we can find it and now it looks like that overflow hose coming down and there's not too much more to take apart Get this hose and we're just going to pull it out of here uh, once i pull this hose let me readjust the camera a little bit once i start pulling this hose out you can see it coming out of the whole thing comes out there we go so that came out there and this comes out So all that's left is this little collar guy. Which just looks like it just unclicks like this. So now I start I have to start getting rid of this coolant safely. I have an old milk jug here. And if you look right there, it's high density polyethylene. That's what you want. That's way more resistant to like paint thinner and stuff. Pretty good stuff. I'm going to take it down to the recycle. So it looks like my coolant was on the low mark. That's the low mark. That's the high mark. I have my milk jug and this funnel. It just falls over funny, so if you prop up the funnel against something, it'll stay, hopefully. Now we can pour this old coolant out. I did buy this bike used, but luckily this coolant looks pretty clean, which is a good sign. So I'll clean this up and rinse it out. All right, we might as well finish and get this overflow hose. So it comes out of here. There's a clip here that I'm going to have to remove. If you go down to this plastic guy here, I'll show you how to get that off. It's a little not difficult, but you have to figure out which side to depress the plastic thing. So here's the free end of the clip. You don't want to take it apart from this side. You want to take it apart from the other side. And I have this tiny little screwdriver. You can probably use a lot of different things, but you basically kind of have to get it up under here. Sometimes you have to kind of finagle it a little bit. I did practice practice this before I try to film it. There we go. So see how I have the screwdriver under there finally. I think if you pull on this a little bit. So now that I got that there, I can push. Now the whole thing just comes out. I'm gonna come off like that. Oh yeah, you can see the little Tab. So I was prying this up like that. So the last thing for this overflow hose is just to squeeze these little tabs, pull that down. You can probably do it with your fingers if you're careful, but I'm just going to use these needle nose. Squeeze that in and pull down here with my fingernail. Very 
There we go. I'm going to try this. There might be a better way, but I'm going to just stick my little screwdriver in here. And then just squirt a tiny bit of water. If I can work that around. Actually, that worked pretty good. That loosened it up. Now I can grab it, pull down. There we go. It actually worked pretty good. Now we can just feed it out. And there it is. Let's put it over here to be cleaned. So I had that other video about how nice it is to be able to spin this bike around. So we need to get to the other side and the better lighting's on the other side. So this is nice. You can just spin it like this. So now that it's spun around, we can get over here to the next project. Which is right on the water pump. There we go. There's the water pump. This is a hose going out to the radiator. We need to undo this bolt here to drain the fluid. So I had a little look, rolling tray that I just set up under here and an oil drain pan. We'll see if this works. I put on some nitrile gloves and I got some rags ready in case it spills. And I did put on my safety glasses just in case we get some splashing going on. That looks lined up pretty good. So let's break it loose. Spin it out. I'll break. See if we can get it loose now. There it goes. It's barely catching it because There we go. Now it's coming out. There's a little plug. It's got a copper washer on the back. You're supposed to replace it. Um, I've heard other people say you can reuse it up to three times. So let's just let that drain out. So here's the drain plug with the copper washer. I think I will replace it because usually the washer is to account for mismatched surfaces. You can see right here, there's a little ridge. It would probably still work, but we'll see. I'm just going to put it back in for now. There we go. I'd say 98% of that is drained out. I did wipe this off before I put this bolt back in. So my old drain pan just had this tiny little spout here. And when you go to pour it, it would just make a huge mess. So let's see if this new one works better. It has a bigger spout right here. Let's see. Hopefully, I don't want a big mess. Oh, much better. And 
good news is we don't have more than a gallon. Sometimes it's nice just to have a rag here. If you catch this drip, then it doesn't get on the outside. Oh, it looks like I was filming that whole time. Oh, well, there it is. Not even, doesn't even look like a quarter of this gallon milk jug. It's going to wipe this out. Actually, I already did, but it's always good to wipe stuff off before you set it aside. So here's the new coolant that go, is going in. Pre-diluted antifreeze. Do not add water. But there are some danger signs. Harmful or fatal if swallowed. Contains ethylene glycol. May cause damage to kidneys through prolonged or repeated exposure. Do not breathe mist, vapors, or spray. Wash thoroughly after handling. Do not eat, drink, or smoke when using this product. If swallowed, call a poison control or doctor. If you feel unwell, rinse mouth. If exposed or concerned, get medical attention. Store locked up. Do not... Dispose of contents and container in accordance with the local and national regulations. Do not let stand or store in open, unlabeled containers. Do not reuse containers. Solution can be poisonous to animals. So yeah, animals have died, unfortunately, because people have left this out in the pan and the animal came by. So that's why I'm reading that. Okay, I think this is probably a good place to stop for today. We're removing the radiator. And we... Did the air scoop right, the coolant, we drained it, and then we did the coolant reservoir hose cover, reservoir, reservoir cap, and radiator cap. Now we've got this other stuff left to go, which you can see by the diagram is going to be a little bit more work. So, talk to you soon.